Welcome everybody to The Scramble, where we take recommended doses of everything great about the world of gaming, mix it up, and serve it to you in one hot, fresh, and tasty show. My name is Samantha, and I'm your host for The Scramble. This episode is bursting at the seams with star power for you guys, because we got two giants of the tech and gaming industry right here to talk, of course, about tech and gaming. First off, we'll be taking a look at the biggest headlines for the past week. Wow. Huge FF7 news, details of the time-bending game Deathloop, and Dota 2 Dragon's Blood going local? Mm, very interesting. After all of that, we'll be sitting down with two blockbusters, Ari Neiman and Boss Mac of Back to Gaming. I can't wait for these because you can't talk tech and gaming in the Philippines without their names coming across in the marquee. Speaking of blockbusters, we also got a slim and sleek new ROG Flow X13 right here the new slim and sleek laptop that's got everyone in the tech world talking and lastly we're bringing back player nay for our esteemed guests to see if our new lineup of obscure games might just tickle their fancy all this and more on this episode of the scramble anything else, we'd like to talk about some of the biggest headlines making the rounds in the world of gaming right now. We got news about FF7, Deathloop, Dota 2, Dragon's Blood, and some new VR titles here. We actually have a tech expert joining us, and he's also the owner of Back to Gaming. We got Boss Mac in the house. Hello, Welcome everyone. Welcome indeed to the show. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> what's up? What's up? <laughs> and of course, a veteran host for live events, and well, I'm very proud to say that this guy is the number one go-to guy for hosting weddings in the Philippines. He's also an avid streamer and a passionate gamer. Welcome to the Scramble, Ari Neiman. Thank you, thank you very much, Sam. Sam, if you get married, huh, you just let me know. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know you're my go-to guy, bro. I got you. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> you just have to find me a groom first. <laughs> I got you, I got you. <laughs> All right, I'm really pumped up and ready to have you guys on the show. Are you ready to run through every single detail for today? Ready? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're <laughs> yeah. good. Good. I shaved for this. Born <laughs> ready. <laughs> anyway, first off, we've we've got Final Fantasy VII Intergrade. It's a PS5 upgrade to the last year's FF7 remake for the PS4, but it's got two new additional chapters featuring Yuffie Kisaragi and Sonon Kusakabe. On the campaign side, the game will pick up where FF7R left off after the destruction of Mako Reactor 5. And also on the tech side, apart from the usual PS5 upgrades like improved effects, you got the lighting, the textures, you know, it can be run on graphics mode, which is in 4K, or performance mode that will prioritize 60 FPS gameplay. So will you be picking up this game anytime, gentlemen? I know Ari's answer for this one. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I'm, I, I know for sure. But how about you, Boss Mac? Let's start of with you. Of course, of course. Like, I have the game in two accounts already. Then I have oh. the physical version. I'm getting this. But... I don't have a PS5 right now, but of course, of course. Same. And how about you, Eric? I think uh, Final Fantasy uh, VII Remake was the first, um, one of the first RPGs I played in a long time. Um, mm -hmm. In a long time, because um, I was just busy for the longest time. And um, I think with uh, with this, this is one of, I, I'm, I'm holding off on getting a PS5 because I mm -hmm. still have so much backlog on my uh, PS Pro. But um, this definitely is one of the reasons I'll, I I'm gonna get a PS5 and this is definitely mm -hmm. gonna be one of the first games I will get for it. Um, uh, having, getting to play Yuffie, I think is uh, really, really cool. Exciting. Um, uh -huh. 60 FPS, and uh -huh. the game, have you seen the game? It looks gorgeous. Yes, like I love, I love that they put the, the, the uh, comparison of what it looks like on uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
PlayStation 4 and 5. It, it looks... The Pro. They compared it to the Pro. That yeah. was the Pro? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, okay, that that's even pro. better. That's even better. So, yeah, yeah, it looks really good. looks really smooth. Even the textures yeah. in the back look really, really, really good. The hair so, is so much more yeah. defined right now. You don't yeah. have those like powdery look in the hair. So clean. <laughs> it, it looks really so good. Nice. So, um, I, I would say that um, definitely... Um, uh, something I would get once I get my PS5. Excellent, yep. excellent. So apart from that PS5 upgrade, we also know that they're going to be treating new games to the set of the FF7 era. We've got FF7, The First Soldier, which is, get this, a battle royale game set in Midgard uh, before the events of FF7. So as a soldier candidate, you have to make full use of your abilities in battle for survival. So okay, I getcha, I getcha, but uh, apart from that, there is also the FF7 Every Crisis, which is an episodic game on your mobile. Um, a takeaway from FF7, similar to the FF15 Pocket Edition. So hold up. What do you guys think of this Battle Royale slash shooter set in FF7? Uh, I, I'm a bit like, I mean, for me, Final Fantasy will forever be a RPG. Um, mm -hmm. So it will definitely cater to a certain market who still love the game True. and just want to play a Battle Royale. Mm -hmm. Is it something I will personally get? Um, probably not. Uh, but um, it, I, I just, you can, you can cast spells, you can cast fire, and all of these things for the phone. So I, I would say it, it's definitely interesting. Um, uh, I would probably, it's something I would probably try just for the heck of it. And then you start liking it. <laughs> then you start I, playing it. <laughs> I never know. I never know. How about yeah, you, so, Boss Mac? Are you gonna give um, it a try? Well, like Aria, I. Really don't know how like what to expect. I might try it, but it's not really you know, my idea of Final Fantasy, especially seven. Like everyone who is my age puts Final Fantasy in such high regards that anything you do to well, how do you know promote it is mm -hmm. pretty much sacrilege to the uh, <laughs> to the, <laughs> to the <laughs> holiness of uh, Final Fantasy seven. So after a lot of mind-bending Groundhog Day-esque trailers, we finally got an idea of an upcoming game called Deathloop and how it's gonna play out. According to Bethesda and Arcane's new video, Deathloop explained players have to take control of a character named Cult and he's an assassin with a time loop problem. And to free himself from the loop, he has to assassinate eight specific targets in a time-constrained uh, environment. And of course, the process, he has to go back to the beginning of the loop if he doesn't kill all of the eight. And to further complicate things, he's actually being chased down by this agent that's tasked to kill Cult. Her name's Juliana, who can be an AI controlled or can also be controlled by the players. So I'm getting a strong edge of tomorrow vibes here. Oh, Have you seen yes, that movie yes. too? I love that movie. So what do you guys think about it? Um, are you guys excited to try this game out? Does it appeal to you? Does it, um, is it something, I, I don't know, is it something that you might want to stream in the future since both of you are into streaming as well i love it i love it i like the concept of planning everything out because mm -hmm. i'm uh, like, i'm more into details of what i do so yeah. if you're coming up start uh strategy games definitely this is something strategist yeah that you want to that you want to try like if everything goes well right kind of feels like a like a strategy slash time attack mode on steroids yes like, kinda like yes, yes yes i don't get, i don't get the multiplayer mode though also the like, basically it's gonna be like 1v1 if, uh, if it's a multiplayer but uh we'll see it looks really um i think there's a lot of replayability here mm -hmm. like with this because mm -hmm. like like it's kind of like it's like a puzzle basically right like mm -hmm. you try to solve sure. a puzzle in, in the form of a first person shooter Your I can see a record lot... speed run yeah trial. i can see a lot of speed runs <laughs> i can see a lot of speed runs speed i can see a lot of content run. being done here i can see a lot of like five head plays like oh five mm -hmm. head run um yeah. where where someone kind of thinks of something that other people's didn't. And I can also see like uh, Bethesda like releasing updates of like a really hard way, like like a really hard version of a certain map or a really hard version of a, just like maybe just like a hardcore version, like, like a, you know. It's still going to be a mechanical game. So like if you're good in puzzles, you still have to be mechanically really good yeah. because there's movement involved. So Ari, I'm sure that you already know this one because you are a huge fan of Dota 2, which yes. is Dragon's Blood in oh, yeah. a new anime series that's coming to Netflix, by the way, that's going to be focusing on a heroic Dragon Knight. And would you mind naming this person for Davion, me, Dragon man. Knight? 
Davion. Davion. Bro. Yeah. Davion. Yeah, there means, you go. Means stupid according to Marana, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Or Bobo, I'm um, here in Filipino, so I mean, it's like, but I, no, I was talking about the trailer. There was a really good trailer um, where Marana says like Davion means stupid, but yeah, Davion's basically Dragonite, a playable character in uh, in Dota. Uh, Marana as well, a playable mm-hmm. character. I mean, you know, I'm just to have Dota and anime like just kind of mix so well, and this is like this That's feels true. like Castlevania Netflix adaptation. I love Castlevania. Mm. And what I'm loving about this as well, it seems like they're gonna debut a new character, a new hero through this oh. anime, bro. Mm-hmm. True. Bro, there's so many. I'm just like the things. That's head like, cannon, buddy. <laughs> How will you guys feel if you suddenly hear Davian or Mirana suddenly speaking in Tagalog in our dialect in our We're language? We're expecting it. You're I'm expecting excited. it for sure. I'm excited, 100%. dude. Dude, okay, cool. the yeah. memes that are gonna come out of this, the memes that are gonna come out of this <laughs> series, because it's in so many languages. I swear, mm. the content that's gonna come up, the content that's gonna come out of this series. <laughs> Thank you very much, gentlemen, for helping me out with a run-through of our news for today. And that's it. We are going to take a really quick break right here on The Scramble. Welcome back to The Scramble. Now let's get to know our guests up close and personal. Let's start with Boss Mac, why don't we? So can you tell us more about this history of, I can see you have a mug over there, back to gaming, because according to our research team right over here at the office, it didn't actually start with you, right? Uh, this history is like really long. So like from my, uh, like the way I tell it, I usually go way back even before that because I have this friend and he, he started the site, and it started out as a as a um, what do you call this? A pretty much a gaming website where he focuses more on video games. So he tells stories about video games, and that was 2008, 2007. So back to gaming is really, really OG when it comes to uh, like uh, the the Philippine gaming uh, scene, but. You know how it works. Like we have jobs, we have to maintain our uh, our uh, our day job. So yeah, he started fizzling out of the of the of the job uh, of the I mean the website. So I was oh, I was a back end guy. So I did the 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 site uh, maintenance and all of those things. But then some brands came in. We have to do hardware reviews because like. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of brands are getting into the blogging uh, the blogging scene, so they were sending us uh, samples for the review, and that was where I uh, stepped in. And as an IT guy, I have experience in basically how do you, how do you say this without offending people, mm, <laughs> dubbing down things and writing them creatively because okay. I have a journalism background. Uh, I have the words. In, I have the words. Um, tech 101. I think that's the safest yes. that we can go. I have to give them a, <laughs> uh, a tech 101 on the product and then say if it's good or bad. Okay. So that's pretty much how I write reviews and the brands, they loved uh, how I wrote reviews and they started sending more and more and more. When 2011 came, I I have fully taken over back to gaming. It has become a more of a hardware website and right now depending on where you look it's ranked top 100 of the uh tech computer gaming website in the world wow wow that's how we do it bro that's how we do it it. represent Mm. philippines y'all so uh congratulations Mm. that's something to really brag about i mean if i were in your shoes i'd be bragging about Mm. it top 100 around the world wow um so anyway we also heard that you're currently streaming every week so Mm -hmm. um a little birdie told us an informant told us that this came out out of a bet So how true is that? And uh, how on earth did it start from a bet and then straight into streaming? What is, what's going on there? (laughs) I really don't know who said it was from a bet. I actually did three episodes of that stream already saying, Mm -hmm. uh, telling the story. Uh, The stream came out because I don't want to make this uh, show sad, but I've had, I've had my second mild stroke. (gasps) last year i've had a mild stroke in 2019 that was march 5 and i had another mild stroke Mm -hmm. on march 17 Mm -hmm. that was the day of the lockdown in march 2020 oh good so the second one really 
did a number on me because mm. it numbed the entire left side of my body mm -hmm. it is still numb to this day oh. and that also includes my tongue this doesn't move as normally as most people I do see. so i have a problem speaking and the only way that i think because you know how mean people are on the internet how mean people can get in the internet right they could like, be yeah. Yeah, yeah, true. So as part of us, like as someone who has to at least make videos to promote brands, mm -hmm. I wasn't speaking right, and I did five videos one week after I had a stroke. All of the mean comments, all of those oh. things, like I never took it in, but mm -hmm. it is still a learning. Uh, it's still a learning um, experience, right? So all of these people are are saying facts. Like besides the the fact that they are really about it, it's still fact that. They can't, uh, they can't understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So I have to fix that. Mm -hmm. So that was the problem. So I started streaming to practice Excellent. my um, my speaking mm -hmm. again. And from there, that was I think the first time I streamed was April or May. No, 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 no. That was June last year. So since then, I have done streams every day, Monday to Friday, nonstop. Although wow. I do take breaks, like one mm -hmm. week breaks two three days but never a whole month without a, uh, a streaming but i'm not paid to do anything it's actually built upon the concept of taking in questions from the reader and i answer them on the I spot and it. people are saying people are asking is that scripted or is that recorded no everything uh -huh. is like real time everything is mm -hmm. live everything i know is stock information mm -hmm. so that's what surprises a lot of people especially people that do this for a living like a lot True. of people in my friends just are from youtube they do youtube videos mm -hmm. i do this live so i don't have to rehearse exactly. i don't have to practice if i can't uh, tell you the answer right now mm -hmm. uh You'll this message me will work exactly. on it yeah and a lot of people are loving me for the fact that i respond to them 24 7. i have Aww. this person like boss back do you even sleep oh uh, i try <laughs> <laughs> i try <laughs> but yeah so that's how i started streaming so this week i haven't started yet mm -hmm. so if i do this after we uh, after we do the show so i hope you guys like catch me after this i'll share with you my links i will for sure boss mac anyway um was it really because um because of the first three streams that you did, did you find yourself uh, more passionate after the first few episodes? Or was it something that you really planned long term? The first three episodes was actually me just testing a microphone every oh, day. So wow. I got uh, one microphone, I got another microphone, <laughs> I got another microphone. Then I ended up with this one in the third week, I think. So mm -hmm. that was all the first episodes. And Neat. then the audience was really into it. Then I started doing a program. So I started listing topics that we'll talk about today. And that's uh, pretty much how it went off. Excellent, excellent. And um, it's great that you actually started from that because it's showing people as well. Like, you know, it's a it's an industry, really. It's a learning curve. You have to start mm -hmm. from somewhere and you have to progress eventually. Mm -hmm. You'll make mistakes. But then, you know, taking it from you, you you make me want to stream myself consistently. Ari, Ari, help me out here. <laughs> you know it, man. Just, just grind I actually, right? I actually just do one hour a day. So I don't force okay. myself to do four or two yeah. just one hour true yeah. true okay i'll take it from you boss mac but anyway Ari, um getting into the streaming i know that you're streaming dota so what has that been like for you was dota the first uh game of that you chose was it an active choice or did you have a fan base that told you hey yeah. you must stream dota first so what was that well, like how it started first of all mac you didn't tell me you had a second one holy Man, I just found that out now. I, I really don't tell people about it. It's like, bro, like, this does just forget it. I, I live. Yes. <laughs> I, no, yes! no, I'm, I'm dude, for freaking, I'm so happy. Like, I, I mean, never I'm told same. anyone. I never, yeah, I, I only got comfortable talking about it around the start of this year because I have, yeah. But yo, man, I'm glad you're okay, man. Sorry, I just, I heard that for the first time. So I was yeah. just like a bit. I've been caught it's for the I audience. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm oh, sticking yo. back too, to be honest. But oh, it's man. a beautiful but hey, man. story. Hey man, I'm glad. I'm glad you're okay, bro. I'm glad you're okay, mm, man. Just take care man. of yourself. Take mm -hmm. care of yourself. All right. Well, um, regarding the Dota <laughs> part, um, well, the pandemic happened, mm -hmm. so we have no work yet. Uh, the biggest thing that I always, um, because I'm very, very, um, 
obviously connected and close to the Dota community. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Dota community has given me so much opportunities mm-hmm. over the years. I've been able to travel the world, True. host um, tournaments all over the world and mm-hmm. uh, great tournaments here in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Um, and I always thought like, um, I gave it a shot. I said, 2016, I'm going to play some Dota. Let's play. Uh-huh. I streamed. I played it. I hated it. Oh, he <laughs> really hated it. Okay. It was so hard. I did not know what the hell I was doing. Mm-hmm. I just, I just, it was a really bad first impression. And the, I'm not the only person who feels that way. Mm-hmm. So many people have had such a hard time Dota for the person. That's why I commend Slacks for trying to do a tutorial. Mm. These new people, these new guys that are going to come on Dota after Dragon's Blood, mm-hmm. get ready to get hurt. It's going to be hard, <laughs> but it's going to be worth it. Mm-hmm. It's going to be worth it. I promise it's going to be worth it. But I just, um, I, I had a really bad first impression because I just didn't know what I was doing and I didn't understand the game. It, it took so much and I obviously was very busy. Mm-hmm. So time was also a factor, but the pandemic was always also like an opening to do things I've always wanted to do. True. And so um, there were all these projects that were all all in the back of my head. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, maybe I can do this, maybe I can do that when I have the time Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and uh, all the time in the world happened and uh, I started out with this coaching series um, uh, and I called up a friend Purge who's a a personality in the Dota community Mm -hmm. he taught me that that did pretty well Mm -hmm. and when I started learning it I'm just like oh and then after Purge we had BSJ who's also one of very very well respected as well coach in the dota community Mm -hmm. and um when i don't want to do things i don't enjoy and that's why i stopped true with dota Mm -hmm. i was just like i didn't enjoy it Mm -hmm. um but um i found myself genuinely enjoying after a while and um i just genuinely fell in love with the game it's Mm -hmm. it's a great game it's a game that you can play forever because Mm -hmm. it's just the replayability of this game is just it's never the same game man (laughs) So, um, uh, I did it because my main reason was I wanted to become and do better as a host Mm -hmm. for Dota community, you know, for Mm -hmm. the Dota community. That was my main reason because I needed to have a reason for something I love doing Mm -hmm. because I didn't like the, I I really didn't enjoy the game. So Mm -hmm. I'm just like, you don't enjoy the game, but you have this and Mm -hmm. how, how do you get around it? Mm -hmm. Because I'm just not enjoying. So I'm just like, well, you love hosting. Yeah. Yes. So if you do better here, then you will do better at hosting and it will make you more effective and you can make more memes. Like way better memes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can no, for the I memes. Can memes. Dude, and I'm, yes! I'm, I'm, I have so many memes in my head, bro, for Dota. Like it's just because I played the game, um, and a lot of people say it, do you think you would probably host better and do better mm-hmm. if you knew what you knew now with Dota? And I'm like, absolutely, one hundred percent yes, mm-hmm. because I, I I get it, you know. I see you why you finally, love it. I, yes. I'm playing the same game you guys are, and uh, um, you know, uh, I that's the reason why I did it. And mm-hmm. yeah, now I genuinely enjoy playing. There's mm-hmm. so many games I can play now. I'm just like I played this game, this game, this game. I'm just like right. for some reason, bro. I'm still playing Dota, Mac. I'm like <laughs> I'm not playing any other game, Sam. I'm just playing Dota. This damn game <laughs> that has a grip on my soul. <laughs> That That's stresses okay. me out so much, this game. It's a, I hope it's a good kind of stress. That's what matters. No, no, it's the bad kind of stress, Sam. I'm not even trying to think. I'm giving people the reality. It is a hard game that is so, so satisfying, but can be so devastating sometimes as well. It no, just but gives you, you already everything. got over the, the plateau mm-hmm. of yeah. the learning curve. Yeah, yeah true. Yeah, so now it's just getting better at the game or just staying the same. Some people say the same now. forever. Mm-hmm, true, true. Yeah. Anyway, uh, speaking Speaking of pro, so um, I know that your profession, you are an excellent lives events host, Ari. And um, I've Thank experienced you. this. Uh, I was beside you at ESGS. We hosted together. Yes. Um, that was a great experience for me as well. That was but fun. It was so much fun. But then here's a really good question. You know, I mean, we're both struggling uh, in this pandemic. Um, what was it like to transition for you from live events and then going straight to digital? You're talking about streaming, but how about for mm. your work per se? Was it difficult for you? Was the transition, the, was the really learning curve the same as your learning curve for Dota? <laughs> um, it's a really good question. Um, a lot of hosts had to transition to hosting digitally mm. and doing this, basically. True. Um, uh, the main difference is um, you, 
you it's so easy to get a pulse of the audience mm. when you're hosting live because you feel it, mm-hmm. you feel any reaction, you get a pulse. It's mm-hmm. easy to get a feel of the audience. With streaming, you don't have that. You're just talking to a camera. But what I've found to be my pulse for digital are the comments, are the chat. Yeah. That's that's my pulse. Like mm-hmm. that's when I get a good back and forth because you need a back and forth because hosts are communicators. You communicate. True. If you if if you don't have that back and forth, it's not communication, right? True. It's it's uh, it's a just monologue. You talking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a monologue exactly, um, and that's not what a host is. A host communicates and connects. Mm-hmm. So um, I've found that to be my nice my pulse, my way of connecting mm-hmm. with everyone. I think the comments and the chat is like just that's it. Um, but that aside, um, I felt that because of streaming, I've actually improved as host. Oh, because excellent! Because I have, because I think I'm exercising communication much more than I did before. Like before, mm-hmm. I would only communicate and host when I'm hosting, when I'm booked for an event. Mm-hmm. But now, because I'm doing it almost <clears throat> Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm very aware of my candor. I'm very aware of little subtleties of, mm-hmm. of also maximizing my voice. I True. speak sometimes. I stream for eight hours, mm-hmm. and I'm talking for eight hours. But I mean, you learn how to modulate. Um, n- not really. It's learning how to speak comfortably, um, mm. very well, and learn how to use your voice properly. Mm-hmm. And just the fact that I'm just communicating so much more, mm-hmm. I've become like like Matt. Dude, yeah. Freaking. My man here just went through his second, his second stroke, and he's like, he's, a, God, he's great. He's, he's speaking awesome. Like, <laughs> exactly. Uh, just, I would just have never guessed. Just by practicing it, mm-hmm. just by doing it, True. straight up. So, um, uh, for me as well, I think uh, I, I'm, I'm the type of person where you just always learn. I, I feel I'm not even there yet as mm-hmm. a host. There's so many things I still want to learn and do, and there's still that level that I'm like. Ah mm. man, and there's still these things that I want to do better at, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. just by streaming, um, I'm, I feel that I've improved because I'm communicating more and I'm understanding these different facets of communication and connecting a little bit more, Very just by true. just doing it more. Very true. On a more personal level, Ari, I'm curious, um, what is it about live events that you miss the most? Um, hearing people laugh. Aww. I think. Uh, I, I yeah, felt just hearing, that. Hearing, hearing. I do miss yeah. the feedback. I, I love it when just they hearing, giggle. Just, yeah. Oh, yeah, just the ha, just the giggle, the yeah. laugh, like the feedback. True. I mean, um, that's definitely one thing. I, I love making people laugh. Mm. I mean, I, I make my wife laugh, my son laugh, my Aww. family laugh as much as I could. Um, you know, so just getting to get a crowd and hearing them laugh mm-hmm. is is really great. It's the but best. when you see the ca- Caps lock, ha ha has. Yeah, My yeah, levels, yeah. But there are levels in 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 how you make True. people laugh on stream. Mm-hmm. If it's like like a like a freaking like a what's the word? Uh, a, an L giggle or a freaking low lol. Lol, lol. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Lol. Ha ha, lol. But if it's like ha ha, ha, ha like you all know caps, they, you know you hit all that caps spot. are just like I got you because <laughs> yeah, it yeah. took it. You actually typed that. You True. actually typed all of that. That takes <laughs> you effort. You made the effort. So you're really you you're like ah, it over and over again. Or if it's just gibberish, <laughs> it's just gibberish, and you're like ah, enter. That was True. funny, dude. Sure. So True. I'm trying to force Eric. You know how uh, Final Fantasy VII has the levels in magic. Ha ha. Yeah. Then we ha ha. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a high raga. Ha 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 ra and ha ha raga. Ha ha raga. That should be normalized. Ha ha and ha ha raga. That's funny. <laughs> That's it for our heart to heart talk with Ari Neiman and Boss Mac. We're gonna go on a quick break, but when we do come back, we'll talk tech on our next segment called Hands On. Hi guys, welcome back to The Scramble and we're going straight on to our next segment called Hands On where we check out the latest cutting edge technology that the gaming world has to offer. It's been two episodes I suppose since we've seen the first of the new 2021 lineup of laptops for Asus ROG and I'm kind of noticing a trend here. First we got the 17 inch Scar, then we have the 15 inch Zephyrus, now we've gone even smaller with the Flow. X 
613. If we go any smaller, I think we might just have a phone next time, if you know what I mean. <laughs> anyway, we've got the Flow X13 here, and Boss Mac, I'm aware that you actually have your very own X13 with you. So, oh, do yes. you mind educating Ari and I all about the beautiful uh, performance of the X13 and what this baby can do for anybody from a working guy to a gaming guy or girl all right so um as you know like every year mm -hmm. asus has something special and it's yeah. usually an <laughs> rog something rog something rog something well, i think that was two years ago where we had the mothership that was like a real a different beast oh as some would i like call it, it. <laughs> like a different beast but this time we have the flow it's like it's a laptop okay cool but <laughs> usually they would they would go like the specs are the the best of the best mm -hmm. and that's what they did here and this is mm -hmm. 13 inches mm -hmm. so you normally you won't get that kind of power at this small form factor but they sure. managed to squeeze in uh, i think this runs an eight core cpu is eight core ryzen cpu and right now they are really really hyped up performance really wow. good so if you're a if you're an office person and you, you juggle between a lot of uh excel files a lot of uh nice. word files there is also a special edition of this one which has a signature purple badge so i don't know what the purple badge is uh is a thing with aces but it denotes that this is a limited edition and right mm -hmm, now they're mm -hmm. doing limited limited so they have a higher edition cpu it gives which gives more power and more memory so you can juggle in between apps games whatever and speaking Excellent. of games that's where this thing is um uh really different so it's a 13 inch exactly. laptop right yeah it's yeah 13 -inch laptop. like at first I, I i didn't want to share with this with you guys but i hated this thing when it came out <laughs> because <laughs> as a gamer take. <laughs> bigger means better yeah. right <laughs> right yes. agree with me <laughs> I <agree. laughs> but, but, bigger yeah, means so better guys it's, it's 13 inches <laughs> but it's a gaming laptop it's their flagship for 2021 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so okay cool uh, but then i didn't know they had this thing right here there we go yeah that baby but before i begin this thing is a graphics card but internally mm -hmm. this thing has a 1650 already an rt mm -hmm. uh, i mean a gtx 1650 which is That's actually true. already playable but depends on your games so i'm not going to say you could run uh 144 150 165 240 hertz on 1080p mm -hmm. with, a, with a 1650 but still there's a lot of games out there that are mm -hmm. playable in 1080p with a 1650 but if you need the boost in performance mm -hmm. that's where you get this baby right here oh okay so this is the xg mobile mm -hmm. so it can be i think their uh, rog will have a 3070 and a 3080 configuration mm -hmm. for this one and so it's a dock right there excellent and it's got that little uh triangle thing that pops out doesn't it yeah so, it's, so you can just sit. stands over there look at that hello mm -hmm. sexy or you can just like <laughs> fly it down like like a planner or something and it's actually <laughs> as big as a planner true but anyways this thing uh this one specifically runs uh, an rtx 3080 mm -hmm. and as you know that's the current um the mainstream flagship right now for gaming and uh my review is coming up so it should be out. Exciting. Um, yeah, it should be out in my website. So do check that mm -hmm. out when it does come out. Follow me on social media. <laughs> but we will, yeah, we so will. check out all the performance for this one when it does. I'm gonna share we with you will. my thoughts. There you go. So it's an actually it's a high performance laptop and it's an ultra book, eh? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Pretty much, pretty much. All right, so it's an Ultrabook, and as a matter of fact, it apparently has an AMD Ryzen 9 of 5900HS, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, a one terabyte NVMe SSD, and a GTX 1650, like Boss Mac has mentioned. You know, I read a lot about the specs before the show, and it seems pretty par for the course, except that 
this graphics card. So, um, what do you think about the specs for the Ultrabook alone by itself? Like, um, do you think this is perfect for a person like myself who likes to do video editing as well? Well, it's an 8 core for starters. Mm. So, 8 core will do a lot Powerful. of things that you really don't need this Ooh. for. I think, um, I think uh, we'll get information about buying for this one, but these are sold separately actually. Mm -hmm. So if you just get this one, you get a powerful CPU, a powerful compact mm -hmm. laptop. So you can do a lot with eight cores. Mm -hmm. So that's just the CPU alone. So if you buy right. the just the laptop alone, it's really, really functional. And the price is actually competitive with a lot of desktops that mm. are out there right now. And that's True. actually surprising because this is a flagship from ROG and they really separate themselves by, uh, how do you call this, uh, making the, the top end premium. But this one, it's pretty much an every man's laptop as long as you need or a woman, compact. Or a woman. Or a woman. <laughs> right there. So <laughs> make it really compact. Uh, I can't demonstrate how compact this is because... Asus I know what you mean mad. though. <laughs> no, I, I know what you mean because it's 13 inch. What's really yeah. great about it is, I kid you not, it's really light. It is mm -hmm. really light, right. surprisingly light, but very powerful nonetheless. And Boss Mac, so this blew my mind. So it has a 360 degree hinge. So, oh, yes. Ari, I gotta brag. Take a Let look at this. this. So it comes, it comes we'll in a laptop, we'll we'll right? <laughs> so first it's in okay, a laptop okay, okay. format. Now, okay. if you wanna do some little presentation for your clients, maybe you wanna go this way. Oh, what the hell? Yeah. Yo, what are you doing with the keys? <laughs> right? And then you can also do it this way. And it flips. Cray. Oh, okay. All right. All and right, Asus. On. I see you. The there's I more, see Ari. T check this out. Okay. Smack. What? What? And it's so now. Sweet. What does the back look like? Oh, it's just, it's press it. You just press it. How did the oh, keys I, I feel it. like? How do the keys feel like? They're very clicky. I like it. Clicky. Yep. Like you, ha you go out, like spend like six hours or half a day outside. Right. You can, mm -hmm. you can, hey, I have to send that email. Mm -hmm. Bring this out. And it will probably last you a good while. So let's say mm -hmm. you're at work, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. then when you get home, this thing, this thing sits on your this desktop. Ah, uh, yes. This thing, the uh, the XG mobile, the ROG I XG mobile. I love how this just pops out. Look at that, Ari. Like, yeah. what? What? So the um, Asus ROG Flow X13, well, um, pretty hefty, but nonetheless, high high performance. You should expect that as well. I think people will just buy that just so they get a graphics card. Mm. <laughs> That's I, I, I actually card. asked that. Actually you can you that. can actually purchase this as a bundle, but then if you want to just get the laptop for the meantime, why not? I mean, it's high performance already. But then if you are really into your gaming and into your video editing, this is the thing that you really need. What I do love about this um, series is that you go mobile it's so light right and then you come home and then you just connect the two Crank and that's that <laughs> that's it and the flow x13 have you seen the bag have you guys seen the bag for... it's oh this, no yeah. it's this so is that part of the price we have 99,995 yep. that's, that's how for much the this laptop baby right mm -hmm, that's correct yeah. That and is if, for the Ryzen 9 5900 version. So there's also a mm -hmm. Ryzen 7. So that's priced a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. And if you want the ROG XG Mobile, that's for another 89,995 for the RTX 3080 variant. Okay, Woo! so let wow. me just uh, let me just add to that. So you buy this uh, you buy this bundle, mm -hmm. you go home, huh? I'm so so tired. I need I need my donut on. But of course you didn't bring this, right? So this thing stays at home connected to your ROG monitor that does like 360 hertz. Mm -hmm. And then your keyboard is connected to this one. Everything's mm -hmm. connected. All you need to do is connect this to this. And I now you're it. rocking a Ryzen 9 plus an RTX 3080 mm -hmm, desktop mm -hmm. replacement. I love it. You get the idea, right? Yes. It's or you a can you can bring this house. along. You can bring mm -hmm. this along. It's not even heavy. <laughs> yeah. It's not heavy yeah. at all. Yep, it's not heavy. And the bag, <laughs> the bag. 
The bag I have to give though. up for the bag. The bag is <laughs> so cool. You can actually take this uh, portion out. Oh! This one on the front is the for the dock. This one is for the laptop. You can separate these Excellent. two. It's really nice. Excellent, excellent. Not bad. Mm. So there you have it. That's it for the Flow X13. Thank you very much, Boss Math, for taking me through it and explaining all the specs to me as well and to Ari. And before we go for a really quick break, we are going to come back with Play or Nay with our guests. It's a little something fun as well. And we also have something very special from Unipin. Stick around. We'll be back in just a few. Everybody, welcome back to the scramble. Triple A's are fun and all, but some of the more interesting games fly under the radar for most. So we scour the internet for games that may have not gotten as much attention as our mainstreams, but we got to take a look at them one by one. So Ari and Mac, Boss Mac, you get to say if you think these are hidden gems or, well, simply if it's a hard pass for ya. So, who knows, you might be able to introduce this to um, friends, you might be able to play this, perhaps even stream this in the near future. This is Play or Nay. So guys, are you ready? Alright, yeah, yeah ready. <laughs> I'm super excited for this. So, guys, Let's cue in the first trailer. Let's show them Hidden Agenda. Oh. All right. Oh. I like these kinds of setup. You ready for this? When it comes to games. Mind. I like that people are involved. <laughs> Whoa. Trapper strikes again. <gasps> oh. Oh. You're on death row. Did you forget that? For crimes I didn't commit. Did that you is cool. That, that is cool. Oh. That's actually pretty cool, bro. What do you think? You check upstairs. I got this floor. Becky? God damn it, where are you? Damn it, <laughs> Becky! <laughs> that TV has some really cool sound system. <laughs> I'm going in alone. Tell me the truth. Oh, it's not oh, cool. Oh, like, yeah, I thought it was like a team obey <laughs> something. Like, you don't have to reveal. It's kind of like yeah. Mafia, but... With phones. Oh. With phones. So it's a psychological action-adventure game played from a third-person perspective. The player takes control of a homicide detective, Becky Marnie, and district attorney, Felicity Graves, both of whom are involved in the case of a serial killer known as The Trapper. So, the game features quick time events that determine the outcome of the story, including a character's death or, you never know, survival. You might be a part of it. With the Play Link feature, others may join the game to vote for a specific decision to be made or using their Android or iOS smartphones in in competitive mode, one player will at some point receive a secret objective, also known as the hidden agenda of the day, which is intended to create conflict between the players as they try to prevent it from actually happening. So that's the synopsis. What do you guys say? How do you find the trailer? I like it. I like I like that people are involved. Like it's multiplayer. I I, I miss yeah, I miss the old days where we actually hang out in front of TV. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the first thing that came to my head, the replayability. I'm like, how many how many scenarios are you exactly going through? Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? There was a part where they they were hiding their phones. Mm -hmm. So that means each of you has to have your own decision. So mm -hmm. how is uh, how is the winner determined, right? Ah, oh, good point. Or, Maybe there are yeah. dares that we don't know about. Maybe we should add some dares like Maybe it's Among Us where on. you have to figure out who's the killer or you have to exactly. be able to pull off the crime. Who's the I think imposter. It feels <laughs> like a it feels like a mafia like Among Us, like you know, with you remember that um uh Netflix The interactive that, one? The interactive Netflix yeah. one? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh Bandersnatch? Bandersnatch, yes. yeah. Yes. You got it. Feels that like one. a Bandersnatch Among Us. Something like that. Mm, yep, yep, yep. True, Mario true. Party. <laughs> <laughs> so, gentlemen, will it be a player knee for you, though? I mean, considering all factors, like the playability, but then also um, you get to bond with your friends, though. So, what is it? Play, nay? 
It'd be a nay for me. Oh, It'd be a nay, but I would probably borrow it from a friend if I'm gonna have friends over ah. to do something. If it's like a fresh thing, like mm -hmm. something fresh, like, hey, I wonder if everyone has this, then I'll mm -hmm. probably borrow it just for a night. Because mm -hmm. it's the replayability. You can only do it once. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, so, yep. True, um, true. It's a nay for me, but I, I, I definitely commend the concept. It's just the replayability that's a thing for me. Very good point. And how about you, Boss Mac? Yeah, nay for me too. Oh, like, I want you I to play with you guys. I have a problem <laughs> with pacing. So like, you know how it is when you play with other friends, especially mm -hmm. like if you're like all of your adults. Yeah. Like everyone's talking trash. <laughs> there you go. Hidden agenda. It's a nay for both our gentlemen. Anyway, let's move on to our second trailer. This right, one's right. called Infectious Madness of Dr. Decker. Dr. Decker was murdered. Dr. Decker thought one of his patients was trying to kill him. I'd heard Dr. Decker was stabbed, but I didn't know for sure. Do you think I'm a suspect, Doctor? <laughs> All Dr. Sus. Decker did was encourage me to think. Do you think oh, it's one of those parents? things again. Why? Mm. Because I stabbed my husband. Decker was a dangerous person. I'm not a murderer. It's just me. I'm going crazy. I he did it. I stabbed <laughs> him with a steak knife. Oh! <gasps> it's our secret. Once you see the truth, it's hard not to spread chaos yourself. I'm a shape-shifting vampire werewolf. I didn't have any legs. <laughs> What? Me. How can you be two things and then become just be a werewolf? Elements are real. I prefer actions. <laughs> That's true. Stopping. That is. <laughs> not unless she was trolling, she's probably trolling. No! <laughs> wow. Oh wow. No comprehension how important your job is, do you? What are you trying to do most? Cure his patients or find out who killed him? I spied on you, Doctor. Oh. You have a strangeness. Don't you? Oh. <gasps> He's sexy. I like oh, 1600. Plus That's a lot game. of envies. I like playing games. It's just a game, bro. Interesting. The infectious madness of Dr. Decker tasks players to find out the details surrounding the death of Dr. Decker. You play as a replacement psychiatrist and you must ask the patient's questions. So that's your main role. One patient is a woman who blacks out and finds herself at the beach when she wakes up and another patient seems to relive the same day over and over. Sounds familiar. <laughs> One patient also believes that he gains an extra hour at the end of the day. During that hour, time freezes and he's free to do whatever he wishes without anybody knowing. Interesting just over there. And the player's questions influence the events of the game and can lead to a variety of different responses, ultimately resulting in different endings. So gentlemen, how do you find it overall? I would only play it for content. I think that's, I would play it for that because I think there are some funny memes that you can do with it. I was thinking just... about that too. You can dub in between. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or like, what do you mean? Like, what about my dog? <laughs> like, did you sleep with my dog? Like, do you think I'm a werewolf? A sh of course a I am. shape-shifting werewolf? Yeah. So oh, you mean? <laughs> so you did it with my dog? Like, you know, like, I mean, I, I would just like, I would create maybe dialogue like that just for True. content. So True. I would play it for the memes. Uh, and how about you, Boss Mac? I'd, I'd play it, I'd play it. Like, seriously absorb and um, digest the story. It, it, it's really intriguing for me. I, I like it. So it's a play for you, Ari, as well as you, Boss Mac, yes? Yes. Okay, yes. cool. So one point for an A, one point for a play. So let's move on to our third trailer. This one's called To The Moon. Let's watch this. Oh no, oh, that, this that's... this already pulls on my heartstrings. What? And they got the music down for sure. Yep, music. It's an old man. Top notch. I have a soft they, spot. They, oh. They, they, they. And there's a bunny. So who's dead? And the music. <laughs> wow. They got the music down for sure, man. Mm -hmm. yep, it's the, yep. Sometimes the music is like, man, it just says it, it pulls all. everything together. Yeah. yeah. Good game, good music. That's it's, good that's scoring, good. yeah. Good scoring. Yeah. Change one thing. Remake, Breath of the Wild. Great soundtracks, you know. Aww. Oh my god. 
This is this sounds like Thanos in, internally talking to himself. <laughs> he so will do it all funny. over again. <laughs> oh, that's cool. But just remember. I With a mask on his head? Oh. <gasps> Ouch. <laughs> the music, man! <laughs> That's such a deep plot. It is. Yeah, no, see, wow. we stop talking. <laughs> oh. To the moon follows two doctors who offer to fulfill a dying man's last wish using artificial memories. The player gets to control the two doctors, exploring the narrative and solving puzzles as they try to reconstruct the dying man's memories in order to fulfill his dying wish. So unlike the typical RPG, To the Moon has no battle system. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, the game's focus being a more story-driven game is around puzzle solving, interpretation of information from the subject's life, and finding ways to get deeper into his memories i would definitely play this game like mm -hmm. hands down just like with a trailer like that and the soundtrack just sold it like yep take my money a true yeah. the soundtrack the especially soundtrack starting with the flat line oh my gosh that's so, strong that's so wait the doctor the doctors play through his memories like artificial memories yes Mm -hmm. yeah. So they, it, with technology, they have a way of letting him relive his life through his memories. It seems like it is, and being able to just do your dying wish in, in a coma, I suppose. In your head, in mm -hmm. oh my yeah. freaking. I'm hurting right now. So is this a play or is it an A? <laughs> so and it's, it's a, an effective trailer. We're interested right yeah, now yeah, right it's super right good. now it's super definitely good. a play for me it's a play it's a play <laughs> hold on my my heart needs to recover so it's, it's a, a four play. Hour, dude four hour four hour play time <laughs> i don't mind the, it's a movie so four, four hour, hour play time man yeah good. very promising yeah. indeed so there you have it um everyone is on board we're all gonna play to the moon like we announced before, here are the two lucky winners of our Unipin giveaway. Congratulations to our winners and to everyone else who joined, don't fret. We still have more giveaways in store for all of you in our future episodes. See you there. Okay, that's it for Player Nay. Hoping to see your content, both of you, for To The Moon. I mean, I'm, I'm still not over it. I'm still... <laughs> <laughs> It was good. It was a good trailer. I, I, I can't, you know. <laughs> Speaking of streaming, so gentlemen, where exactly can we find you and how can we support you? Let's start with you, Ari. Oh, you guys can uh, check me out. Um, uh, I stream on Twitch and on Facebook uh, at the same time. Uh, you can check me out twitch.tv slash Ari Neiman. Um, if you want to see um, uh, that on Facebook, it's facebook.com slash Erin um, I have uh, bite-sized highlights of the stream and just fun content on my Facebook as well. Um, if you want to see all memes, you can check out my TikTok. I just meme on TikTok um, <laughs> all day. So just, just search Erin Neiman, just one word on TikTok. So tiktok.com slash Erin Neiman. If you want to check the gaming highlights, just go uh, youtube.com slash gaming with Erin. Uh, that Neato. is my YouTube. 
And for all things like life events, celebrations, weddings, um, all of that, mm-hmm. um, my Instagram uh, highlights that. So you can check me out at Erin Neiman on Instagram. I'm gonna hold you to that, Ari. You're gonna host for my wedding, but you have to find me the groom. Yeah, I got you. It's part of the contract, man. Just, just book me. I got you. Gotcha. You get get yeah. me the groom. If I don't get you I hitched get... in a year, you got it. I get your money back for sure. <laughs> All right, I like this deal. Anyway, thank you very much, Ari. Let's move on to Boss Mac. How exactly can we support uh, Back to Gaming and your other endeavors as well? All right. So if you guys are into PC hardware, building PCs, high performance gaming, you can check out backtogaming.com for news, reviews, and uh, basically everything about those things, uh, my analysis, and um, uh, how the how the PC world is running right now. So uh, you can also check me out on social media. It is uh, Back to Gaming everywhere, Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, everywhere. So uh, make sure to follow me and uh, catch me there. All right, and that's it for this episode of The Scramble. Gentlemen, I can't thank you enough. It has been a very fun episode and a very heartbreaking one as well because of To The Moon. (laughs) I can't get over it yet. (laughs) Anyway, thank you so much, and I'll see you again some other time. This has been a wonderful episode. My name is Samantha, and this is The Scramble.